G'day guys, uh, Reckless here with another Armour 3 tutorial video. Um, this is just a quick guide for new and upcoming uh, mission makers to create exciting and dynamic missions um, for uh, FMIS and, and, uh, and Armour 3. Um, the purpose and the point behind the framework is to create a standardised uh, frame or underlying system uh, in your mission so that way no matter who makes a missions all the missions are somewhat standardized on how they function um, what this basically means is no matter who makes it we're still going to, we're going to make sure that the radios are sorted out um, the medical and revive system is sorted out uh, nothing with MCC that is interfering with your mission that it shouldn't be um, and all the settings with ace and, and things like that are basically all taken care of um, this is really really important because so many times uh, people will create missions and then the start is bogged down with people having to fix their gear uh, missions having to be restarted you know due to you know incorrect settings with MCC or, or ASO or anything like that at all so by using this framework you're effectively guaranteeing that the only things that you really need to focus on as a mission maker is the fun things like putting in enemies putting in allies uh, doing loadouts and and basically building the the mission how you uh, want to you know how you're visualizing the mission to, to play out you don't have to worry about all the the underlying um annoying and you know annoying things uh, anyway to get started uh, what you want to do is come onto our uh, team speak and then find our armor 3 room uh, simply right click on it go open file browser and this is the file you're looking for here the fmis mission framework .zip. Uh, now check the date um, quite often I will update it from time to time as new features with different mods come out and and things like that um, but uh, for currently as, as this video right here is it's uh, the 26th of April uh, 2016 uh, simply download it by using this button here once you've clicked on it you can download it uh, and that'll go into your downloads folder then what you want to do is unzip it to your uh, Armour 3 other profiles, yeah, pretty much your name. So that's under my documents, Armour 3 other profiles, your profile in Armour 3. Uh, and then if you, you if you can unzip it here or you can actually put it inside your MP missions folder. Um, this is basically the folder where your uh, Armour 3 Eden editor is going to access any, uh, any missions that you create or anything like that at all. Uh, so basically upon unzipping you're going to get two files, you're going to get mission name dot uh, map name and the framework readme. Uh, the framework readme is going to give you a whole bunch of different map names uh, that you can use. Um, now this isn't all the maps that we have, these are just typically the more popular ones that we use. Uh, in, in the missions um, and it's also going to give you a guide for anything else that you need to do uh, in, case, in case anything else, um, in, ca in case you get confused or something like that. Um, now the mission name dot map name, effectively all you have to do is copy and paste this into your um, MP missions folder and then all we simply have to do is rename this to whatever you want your mission name to be. So let's create a jet mission, we'll call it flying flying high. Uh, now if you use underscores instead of uh, actual spaces um, that typically seems to be more reliable than using spaces so I recommend using underscores if you want to do different names and then put in the map. So we'll play on Chinaris. Now it's pretty important that you're case sensitive. Uh, oh we've actually already got one created. So I'll delete this. So I, uh, we've actually already got one called one created called Flying High. Uh, so yeah, um, it, it is pretty important to use to be case sensitive. So again, uh, you can you can refer back to the framework readme to get you know some of them that are that are case sensitive. Now, if there is a map here uh, on that list or that you don't know the dot map you know, whatever the, the map might be, go into your 3D editor, create just a dummy mission, put down one unit, call it test mission or something like that, and then it will actually appear here in its own folder, um, you know, test mission dot whatever the map name is, and then you can just simply rename your framework mission, um, you know, with the correct map. But for Chinaris, it's pretty straightforward. We just call it Chinaris. Um, basically going inside, a, qu a quick run doing it on how everything looks. The, the only thing that you may want to change is the JPEG image. So upon, upon loading this up, it's going to load a picture of a... Uh, the, the basically the, the Flying Monkeys in Space chimp logo. Um, now if you want to change that, by all means do so. Uh, by default, the image is called 1.jpg. 
um, to get a perfect uh, a perfect fitting image, you want something around the two uh, the ten twenty four by five twelve. Um, you can use any size image, but it will just get stretched uh, in armor and, and not really look as good. So if you do try and re resize it to ten twenty four by five twelve, you'll you'll get a perfect uh, perfect image every time. Um, other than that, there's really nothing else you have to you have to edit here. Um, it's just important that you get your mission name done here. Um, basically, after that, everything else is done All inside. Right, guys, so the next thing is, is you're going to be in your Armor 3 menu. Uh, simply go Play, Multiplayer, uh, click New, uh, go LAN, and then this will open up your, um, effectively, your, your missions. Uh, and we can look at editing in there. So we made one in Chinaris, uh, and it's called, uh, it, should, it'll sh it will initially pop up as Insert Mission Name here. Uh, this is what it is here. Then we want to open it in the 3D editor. Uh, a super easy thing to do is if you have changed the image, um, look for the image. Look for the image that you've changed it to, but by default it will be the monkey. Then we need to open it in the 3D editor. So here we are here. Now certain maps are going to have things a little bit different. Um, I have set all these modules and positions and stuff like that uh, pretty much as in the most easy to access spot as I could possibly find. Um, so th they are effectively put in the same location on every map, um, which would be down around about here. Uh, what you may want to do is drag these modules up to the to ground level um, and then just simply right click on all of them and uh, oh, hang on, maybe you can't do that with all of them. Uh, but something like that, just make them ground level. Um, it's not really going to break anything if they're not. Uh, because they are only modules. Um, just simply for easy to read, you can you can do that. Um, move them out to the middle of nowhere. Sorry. Type of thing, you know. Just you can you can just you can move them flat if you're OCD like me. That's basically me. I'm just really super OCD about how they go in there. Now, if you want to go through and and, and have a hard look at what all these all the stuff does, you're more than welcome to. Um, but by default, it's it's how our missions always are. Um, but that's basically it. So you've got your Zeus's set up, you've got your couple of spectators, your MCC stuff sorted out, your um, your A stuff sorted out, and your Task Force Radio stuff is done via script in the actual, those files that we were looking at back there. So everything's pretty much taken care of. Um, what you want to do then is go to your attributes. Now this is basically the only stuff really up here that you really have to change. Um, you can go into general, uh, change your mission name. So this is why it said insert mission here. Uh, we'll call it flying high. Uh, change your author to whatever your name is. Um, we want to leave the picture as JPEG1. You can put a um, mission overview here, so that's the little text that appears down the bottom. Um, you know, uh, let's call it bomb some shit yo. Bomb some shit yo. Uh, you can, you're welcome to come through the rest of these here again. You know, maybe maybe change this again as well. Uh, you know, all the rest of that go through here. None of this really matters because it's already taken care of in the framework. Um, if you want to make the independent side friendly or, a, or uh, enemies against any side, um, and just for speeding of the mission, leave it as a binarized scenario, um, and then click OK. Um, after this, uh, you can go to multiplayer. Uh, if you want to change the game mode, maximum players and stuff like that, um, you know, the lobby summary. Um, none of this is really going to make any make any difference. This is taken care of in the um, in the framework, so you don't really have to worry about the respawn system. It's all taken care of for you. Um, and tasks, you can, whatever, if you want to put the tasks in or something like that, um, feel free to edit this however you like. Um, then of course, uh, garbage collection is already taken care of in the framework as well, so you don't have to edit that. Uh, and environment, you can you can do whatever you want. Um, this is the my favorite, my personal favorite day, June 30, 2030. Um, it's a good uh, day night cycle with a nice full moon uh, that goes overhead, so it's really nicely lit up. Um, why I like full moons um, is that you can actually make a really nice night mission and not give players. Uh, um, night vision, so they can actually see reasonably well at night um, without night vision, and then you can put traces and explosions and stuff like that, and it looks really, really cool rather than um, everybody's mission running through a uh, night vision goggles type of thing. Uh, again, your rain uh, or, or your weather settings, so feel free. Um, by leaving it unticked, it's taking... Uh, it's, it's, um, 
the inbuilt dynamic armor, uh, armor weather system takes over. But if you do want to uh, edit them, edit them specifically. Um, now, if you do want to make it stormy, make sure the overcast is above 50. Um, but if you want to make, you know, crank it right up. If you want a big storm, um, then you want to make your rain. You know, all the rest of the stuff here. Now, the weather forecasting um, for the for the forecast is adjusted with this this time here, right? So, um, if you set it to an hour. Uh, effectively, the mission's going to start with this, and then progressively over the next 60 minutes, it's going to turn into this. So the way this mission is setting here is at 10 a.m., we've got an 80% overcast, um, and then pretty much by 11 a.m., um, it's going to be down just a 30% overcast, if that makes sense to you. Uh, anyway, um, you can click OK or whatever there. Um, basically, after this, it's just up to you to, to make your mission. Um, I won't go into all the ins and outs on how to use the editor, but I mean, basically, it's it's just that's it. Put your put your units down, make them uh, make make sure you make at least one of them uh, a player and playable. Um, you can change his role description there if you want to give him a name or whatever, um, and, and whatever else have you there. It's it's pretty much all the fun stuff after this. Um, once, of course, you're finished, uh, now, if, now if you want to save your mission along as you go, you can click save and that'll save your, save your mission to the framework folder that we created before. Um, but then when everything's been, te uh, now, now before you do actually start messaging me uh, recklessly and I've got a mission ready to go, please make sure you do play scenario as at least most of the playable players. You want to make sure the loadouts are good. You want to make sure there's no bugs with the mission or anything else going wrong or anything like that at all. Now, if there is something that goes wrong, typically nine times out of ten, it's um, it, it's a unit you've spawned in um, or a setting that you've changed in the framework or something like that. If, if anything does go wrong, that the framework is actually, while powerful, pretty simple. There isn't actually any um, super out there scripting that maybe other units may, other clans may use or something like that. It's actually a pretty straightforward um, system that we use. Um, but anyway, once you're finished, cl simply click Scenario, uh, go Export, and then go Export to Multiplayer. What that's going to do is then ex ex uh, export your entire mission framework and your mission into one PBO that we can put on the server, and that's going to appear in your Steam Armor 3, uh, Steam Steam Apps Common Armor 3 MP Missions folder, as in your Armor 3 directory. That's where that that's where this is going to be exported to. Simply get your mission and upload it to the um, the Armor 3 room uh, that we got the framework from uh, and let me know your missions there and we'll put it on the server and, and have a game. Um, again, if, if you've got any questions, check back to the readme file that comes with the mission framework um, and if anything really uh, it confuses you and you don't get past it, you can either ask myself or Robert or Mabry uh, or even Minigun um, or, or Robo uh, or any one of the guys on TeamSpeak if they can give you a hand and, and most of the time uh, someone will have an answer for you. Um, other than that guys, thanks very much for watching. Uh, we look forward to playing your missions. Uh, good luck and, and have fun with everything and we'll, we'll see you guys on the battlefield.